भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरं चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जायो मुदीर ये नष्टु अभद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैश्चिकी श्रीमद्भागवत की जय व्यासदेव की जय शुल प्रपात की जय सो वी आर रीडिंग टुडे फ्रॉम श्रीमद्भागवत कैंटो सिक्स चैप्टर टू वर्स नंबर फोर्टी थ्री हिवा कले वर तीर्थे गंगाया दर्शनादनु साध्यास्वूप जगृहे भगवत्पर्शवावर्तिन ट्रांसलेशन एंड पर्पट बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शील प्रभुपाद श्रील प्रभुपाद की जय Upon seeing the Vishnu Dutas, Ajamila gave up his material body at Haridwar, on the bank of the Ganges. He regained his original spiritual body, which was a body appropriate for an associate of the Lord. The Lord says in the Bhagavad Gita 4.9, "Janma karma chame divyam evam yoveti tatvataha tektva deham punar janma naiti mam eti sorjuna." One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. The result of perfection in Krishna consciousness is that after giving up one's material body one is immediately transferred to the spiritual world in one's original spiritual body to become an associate of the supreme personality of godhead some devotees they go to vaikuntha loka and the others go to goloka vrindavan to become associates of krishna Upon seeing the Vishnu Dutas, Ajamila gave up his material body at Haridwar on the bank of Ganges. He regained his original spiritual body, which was a body appropriate for an associate of the Lord. It's a very, very beautiful chapter, and one of the um, favorites, because there are so many. beautiful life lessons that we can learn from this episode of um, ajhamila so um i was just you know as i was preparing for this class i was just trying to write down what are the different lessons that we can learn from this whole past time and i was thinking that there is of course we all know that the whole Uh, you know the sixth canto chapter 1 and 2 the main purpose and focus is on the glories of the holy name the conversation between the yamadutas and the vishnu dutas and how this whole episode manifests and how the holy name is so 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 very powerful and the lord is so 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 very merciful but the other lesson that we um, uh, you know uh, can get from this past time is about association how important is the association and here we see in this past time there are examples for both kind of association that is the positive association and the negative association the effect of positive association the effect of negative association because here we see ajamila took both positive association and negative association and we see how um, when ajamila the moment he had this uh, negative association of this um, lady having um, you know um enjoying herself in the company of a shudra even though it was momentous negative association but it made such an impact on his life and his whole life went on in a different direction so it is such a uh, caution for uh, uh, devotees that how negative association sometimes we we may think 
in a, you know, in a sometimes or once in a while uh, may not make that impact, but this kind of uh, pastimes in Bhagavatam time and again warners, even if it is for moment, even if it's a momentary negative association, what kind of impact it can bring to one's devotional life. And then we see the positive association wherein when these Yamadutas and Vishnu Dutas, they are conversing and Ajamila takes the association of these Vishnu Dutas and he hears this, does this Shravanam and conversation and hears about the uh, glories of the holy name, how immediately he becomes a, you know, becomes very repentant and then he becomes very serious and then how he goes to Haridwar and after repentance he uh, goes back home, back to Godhead. And then we also see in this pastime of how a little bit of um, service done to the sadhus. I was, um, you know, many years ago, I was hearing this very beautiful uh, class by His Holiness Radha Govind Swami Maharaj, where he was explaining that how Ajamila and his prostitute wife were so infamous in their whole locality that everybody used to make a lot of fun of them because Ajamila belonged to a very high class Brahmana family, not even, not only like a normal Brahman, but he was like one of the very, very special and in, in among the Brahmanas also he was in a very high class Brahman family, which were like known for their purity and their, um, you know, the rituals they perform and how clean and how, you know, well educated they were. And then we see that how once there is this uh, group of sadhus who come in the middle of the night to that particular village where Ajamila lives or, you know, and then somebody just, you know, uh, making fun of those sadhus, guide them that go and have, you know, they wanted to have some prasadam and shelter. And they said, go and ask this Ajamila sadhu, here is a very big sadhu in our village called Ajamila, go and, you know, take a shelter of him. And how these sadhus, they end up coming to Ajamila's house very innocently, they had no idea who is Ajamila. And then his prostitute wife, she opens the door and but somehow she receives the sadhus and Ajamila was not at home at that time. She receives the sadhu, she gives them shelter, she gives them ingredients to cook in the veranda of their house and the next day morning when the villagers come to know that the sadhus are living in Ajamila's house, they just fetch them, no, no, this is not the right place for you to stay, you know, this, this is the story behind Ajamila and his prostitute wife so however, at that time Ajamila's wife was uh, pregnant and with this boy Narayan who is like the one of the heroes of this, you know, the whole thing happens around him, how he, his father calls his name. So Narayan was in the uh, stomach and the sadhu out of mercy, uh, while they are leaving Ajamila's house, they ask this prostitute lady that can you, you know, we see that you have a baby in your womb and can you name this uh, baby Narayan and she innocently agrees. So we see that even little seva performed to um, sadhu. I mean, I was just trying to draw different lessons from you know this whole Ajamila past. I mean, one lesson is that a little seva done to sadhu can um, save us from a biggest danger. In fact, uh, there are so many such pastimes we see in the life of um, um, uh, devotees, how little seva has you know saved them from greatest dangers. The uh, other day I was uh, reading the pastime of one of the alvars called the Thirumangai alvar. These alvars, they are the, um, they are the weapons of the Lord and this Thirumangai alvar is a, is a bow of the Lord. Just like um, we have our Sadago Swamis who are like manjaris in Goloka Vrindavan. These alvars, they are the weapons of the Lord in Vaikuntha and they incarnate time and again to deliver people. So this Thirumangai alvar, Initially, he he was he was not manifesting any um, symptoms of a devotee. He was just like a normal person, but who was very brave, and um, people were afraid of him. And he was one of the best man of the king, who was um, employed for collecting taxes from people. And then we see this. Um, what happens is that in once in Swargaloka, there is this one uh, apsara called Kumudavali and how she gets uh, cursed because of some mistake she did to be born uh, as a human, you know, and stay there for some time. So Kumudavali uh, comes down as a daughter of a Veda, a physicist, in that particular place where this uh, Tirumanga Alvar is staying. And uh, she's very beautiful, so everybody is attracted to her. So this Tirumanga Alvar, he goes to uh, her father and proposes that I want to marry your daughter. 
So his father says, I have no objection. You ask my daughter if she's willing to marry you. So when Tirumanga Alvar approaches her, she immediately understands, oh, he's the, you know, the incarnation of the bow of the Lord, and now he's, you know, he's forgotten, or, or rather he's not manifesting himself as a devotee. So she tells him that, look, I'm ready to marry you, but uh, I, I want to see a Vaishnava Tilak on your forehead. I want you should serve Vaishnavas. So he says, serve Vaishnavas? So say, yeah, you have to serve every day 1,008 Vaishnavas. You give them food. And not only you give them food, you wash their feet. And while they're having food, you should fan them. If you do all this, I'm ready to marry you. So he very reluctantly agrees because he wants to marry her. And then he starts this. Now he was a tax collector. He did have money, but not that much money. But now every day feeding 1,008 Vaishnavas, as she had taken a promise, if you do that for one year, then I marry you. So he put on a Vaishnav Tilak and requesting all the Vaishnavas to come and washing their feet and feeding them prasadam and while feeding them he's fanning them and doing all sorts of you know service whatever is to be rendered. And now because he's fanning them and he's right next to them while they're taking prasadam and serving them, they, he's hearing their conversations, they're talking to him and when a sadhu opens his mouth, bodhayanti parasparam, they will be talking about Krishna only. So he heard and heard and heard and how he gets purified. And, uh, and, and then at the end of the year, though now the condition is over, but now he can't stop himself from serving the sadhus. He always wants to feed the sadhus, but he didn't have that much money. So he became a decoit. He started plundering people. Anybody who passes through the highway just you know, tries to get the money from them and then serve the Vaishnavas and then serve them. They became a habit. And then one day it so happened that um, uh, the people started coming to know that if you take this highway, this guy attacks you. So they stopped passing through that highway. So he was very sad what to do. So finally Lord Narayan comes there. Lord Narayan comes dressed as a, as a traveler with his wife Lakshmi Devi with loads and loads of jewelers, jewels and gold coins and bullock carts and passes through that highway. And this Tirumanga Alvar, he attacks the Lord. He doesn't know he's a lord. So after you know plundering and taking away all the jewels, now what he sees uh, left is um, there is this uh, ring on the toe of the lord. So he's trying to remove that also, but it's not coming out. And the lord says, "Are you have already stolen everything from me, taken everything? At least leave that ring, you know." He said, "No, no, that will be useful also. If I sell that ring, I can buy leaf plates for serving the Vaishnavas." And the Lord says, even I am trying, it's not coming out, it's very rough. So he said, no, maybe I'll bite it. So he just bends down and with his teeth, he's trying to remove that ring from the Lord's toes. And the moment his um, tongue touches the lotus feet of the Lord, he realizes, what am I doing? You know, suddenly he gets that realization. And then, of course, Lord shows him this Narayan form. And then, oh, and then, uh, you know, he immediately realizes what is his, you know, form and what what is he supposed to do next? And then, of course, he starts preaching and composing so many verses. And that's another story. So, um, I mean, even doing a little Vaishnava seva unconsciously, there was no motive that uh, if I serve Vaishnava, I'll get Krishna Prema. He just did it, but he got so much benefit. Like Ajamila's wife, she just did it unconsciously. She had no such motive. So, we see in this Ajamil pastime how association, we understand how important it is, bad or good, and then we see how Vaishnava Seva uh, brought so much, um, you know, I mean, it was so helpful in, you know, in saving Ajamil from greatest danger, you know, of going uh, to Yamaloka, he was saved and he got the shelter of the Lord. And then we also see how little devotion in the past can help you. Like it says, na, Neha Bikramanasho si Pratyavayona Vidita Svalpam Api Asya Dharmasya. And we see that in Ajamil's pastime, it's not that he didn't do anything absolutely. Um, of course, to glorify the holy name, we may present this whole pastime as one time you chant the Lord's name and everything is over. But but if we deeply analyze, actually Ajamila had done something in the past. It was not that. I mean, he was... He was not ignorant of Krishna conscious process, neither he was offensive, but he was forgetful. That's the whole pastime. He did it for some time and he did it very well. If we read that whole uh, verses and how he was so exemplary, respectful to elders, reading scriptures, serving his parents, everything was he was doing very wonderfully. So we see that even if little bit, but, um, but when we even do little bit, 
Lord is so kind that he will make arrangements to again remind us if we are forgetful. So like this whole past time in Ajamila's life where the Yamadutas come is not to um, shock Ajamil or scare Ajamil. It's basically like an impetus to again remind Ajamil. Because I was reading one of the commentaries where they said that though he chanted the name Narayan, uh, calling out his son, but the moment he saw, why did this, why did this calling of Narayan come? Because he saw these Yamadutas and in that particular moment out of fear, he said Narayan, just calling out his son. But the moment he called out his, the name of his son, to, to in a desperate call for help, that maybe he'll help, but, but the, by the time he finished, you know, reciting that Narayan, he understood that this Narayan cannot help and he was reminded of that Narayan is what I was reading in one of the commentaries. So even if little bit somebody has done in the past, the Lord will make such a situation in one's life that one is forced to remember the Lord. Like the Lord made this situation in Ajamil's life where he was forced to remember the Lord. If, the, if he wouldn't have seen the Yamadutas or something, he wouldn't have, um, uh, you know, um, remembered the Lord. So now why I mention this is, we say when we are preaching Krishna consciousness to others, we say, Are ek bar. If you see one time Krishna's name or one time you have done little bit devotional service, then Yamadutas don't come to take you. Only Krishna Dutas will come, you know, Vishnu Dutas will come. So if it is true, then why did Yamadutas come uh, when Ajayamala was leaving the body? That means uh, they were not supposed to come. This whole thing is an arrangement of Krishna. This is Krishna's plan. He purposely sent them so that he will be scared, so that he will say Narayan's name. So this is all uh, Krishna's plan. So sometimes in our lives also, sometimes Krishna may apparently create situations which we may feel at that time are painful, but basically it's not to give us pain, it's just an impetus to um, make us remember Krishna again. You know, and just Krishna wants to just reclaim us, so he just makes all that arrangement. And that is one lesson which we can get from Ajamil's pastime, how certain circumstances are arranged by Krishna to make us remember Krishna. Like we see um, in the story of uh, Vipranarayan. Vipranarayan is also one of the Alvars who was such a wonderful, wonderful devotee. And um, he was serving the Lord very nicely. He was uh, growing flowers for the Lord and everything in his life was going wonderful. And there enters this uh, lady Deva Devi, uh, who is a prostitute and somehow she um, allures him and then he falls down and then he starts associating with her. And then one day Lord creates such a situation that this Deva Devi, she goes to her house uh, for a few days and she never returns and when uh, Vipranarayan goes to fetch her then his mother-in-law says hey, you you are a pauper you have no money my daughter was a prostitute she was earning so much money and now she just stays with you and we're not making any money out of it go get some money then only I'll send her and now this uh, devotee Vipranarayan is just lamenting how do I get her I can't live without her and then the Lord makes an arrangement he actually dresses like Vipranarayan and he takes a golden bowl from his altar gives it to Devadevi's mother and says now can you send your daughter here is the golden uh, bowl and she sends Devadevi and when Devadevi comes back uh, to Vipranaraya and the original one he doesn't understand how come she came back anyway he was very happy my wife is back in the morning the pujaris are looking for the golden ball the golden ball is missing in the altar missing in the altar and then this uh, mother-in-law comes so oh, this is what my you know Vipranaraya gave it to me this ball this is, but this is the Lord's ball just how do I know he gave it to me that's all then they catch hold of Vipranaraya and they start beating him up and giving him lashes and then the Lord actually appears in the dream of the king and says don't punish him he hasn't done anything it's me who did it and when Vipranarayan comes to know that he feels so guilty what 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 is this I mean I made Lord do this you know for me he, st he stole a golden uh, bowl and you know, just to make me happy what am i doing with this deva devi actually why did i fall down from my position what i was doing and what am i doing now i was a devotee of the lord and i was growing this beautiful flowers for the lord and i was making garland for him and why did i even fall in this position so now why did 
Lord create this uh, situation is just to uh, remind him that, oh, you, you are forgetting, what are you doing, you know. So like that we see so many pastimes. You know, one of my other favorite pastime is that of um, Purandar Das. When Purandar Das, he was living in Pandarpur, the fag end of his life, and how once he, he makes a small mistake, not mistake actually, it's like a, Purandar Das was an old man, maybe like a 90 year old man. And then he had this um, servant who used to come and give him water every day for doing his puja services. And once the servant becomes late, so he's all upset, my puja time, you know, why isn't he come with the water? And then Lord is also worried very where this servant has, you know, become late. So Lord dresses like that servant and comes and gives him water. Here is your water for puja. And Purandar Das, he gets all upset and says, this is the time to bring the water. He gets very angry and he flungs that... Um, water pot and, and the Lord gets hurt on his head. Now Lord also takes a revenge. Acha, so you are doing this to me. So now what Lord does is he dresses like, you know, you know, like Purandar Das and he goes and, uh, you know, to a prostitute's house and gives her certain jewels or something which belong to the, which belong to the Lord. So next day morning when those jewelry, jewels are missing, then they all say, where is this, where is this? The prostitute says, I have them. I said, who gave you this? So he said, Purandar Das gave. So everybody is shocked. Purandar Das is such a exalted devotee and he was with you, the prostitute? He said, yeah, last night he came and uh, I was dancing for him. I was dancing for him and this is what he gave me. So now they thought this man is crazy, 90 year old, we thought he's an exalted devotee. So they took him and they tied him to a pillar and they started beating him, you know, giving him those lashes. And then the Lord comes to Purandar Das, stands there in a very naughty way and says, how is it? The other day I came to serve you and you bet me on the, um, you know, head and how is this? So do you want some more? So now... Um, See, the Lord's pastimes are, of course, Purandar Das is a very exalted devotee, but um, but he did a he did a Vaishnava prad because he was like you know after his anger he threw this on a Vaishnava. That of course that was Lord who came dressed as Purandar Das servant, but Lord will create certain circumstances wherein because he loves the devotee. It's not that he wants to give pain, but just like a mother reprimands the child sometimes, and you know. Takes the, takes the child by ear, so will you do that again? So it's like that. So we, when we see that, you know, apparently the uh, fall down in life of devotees, whether it is Ajamil or whether we see Bharat Maharaj who was on the Bhava stage, basically what is happening is, the other day one devotee asked me a very interesting question. He said, how did the devotee fall down from Bhava stage? And if at all he fall down from Bhava stage, then see the whole thing is, there is no fall down. There is just an um, interruption. For example, I was giving this example that just like in the classroom, I remember when I was in school, if the naughty children make a lot of noise, then the teacher, those who are naughty children, the teacher will say, go outside of the class and keep your you know, hands raised in the air and stand there. 45 minutes period used to be there, you know, 45 minutes. 45 minutes, they have to stand outside. After the class is over, then when the teacher is about to leave, she will allow the naughty children to come inside. So it's not that after 45 minutes, now they don't belong to class 4 anymore. Now they became, they went off to class 2. No, they are still in grade 4 only. Only for that 45 minutes, they go out and that punishment, and then again they come back to grade 4. So those devotees who are on those higher stage, it's not that now they fall down from grade 4, now they became grade 2. No, they're still in grade 4. For 45 minutes, they were outside punishment, then they again come back and continue with grade 4. So this is what happens with the devotees. It's not that, you know, fall down means like, no, if they get a punishment. Like Bharat Maharaj got a punishment. So he had to become a deer, but then he again continued from where he was. He didn't have to again repeat from grade 2 or something like that. So we see that even a, a little devotional uh, service, you know, how it saved, whatever Ajamil had done, Lord does not forget. People in this world forget whatever we have done for them, but the Lord never forgets. Even if little bit we do, he'll remember. The other lesson um, we learned from this pastime is Dhyayato Vishya Pumsa, that verse of the Bhagavad Gita second chapter, verse number 62, very clearly we see here that, okay, for that moment he saw that Shudra and he saw that prostitute. 
So what he was supposed to do was immediately ask for help. Uh, but he didn't ask for help. And then what happened? Dhyayato Vishyabhum. So he kept on thinking and how they were enjoying and then how they were laughing and then how um, they were drunk and you know what activity they were doing. And then ultimately he uh, gets that lady as a servant maid in his house. Now more close, close contact and then ultimately leaves his wife and uh, gets married to this prostitute. And this is also very interesting for devotees that how the moment we see a little crack immediately help should be sorted so like you know like we see in those those trains you know there is a little problem in the train immediately technical department needs to be informed otherwise the whole train gets derailed somebody can't say thoda chota problem hai, it's okay the, the whole chota problem only will become a big problem so the moment a devotee also feels in their life somewhere the mind has got a little distracted should immediately seek help seek help from somebody, ah, I need help. So if we are casual, then we become casualty. <laughs> if we are casual about it, it's okay, then we become. And after that, we can keep on doing post-mortem, what must have gone wrong, what went wrong, but that doesn't help. So um, we should be very careful. We should not be casual about even a small distraction in our life, whether it is mental or whatever, because you know, in this in Kali Yuga, the mental thing doesn't count. So that we are so confident about. And even if it happens mentally, we think ye to share karne ki zarurat nahi. it's not re required to share because anyway in Kali Yuga, the mental thing is not counted. No, where we feel a little distraction is coming, immediately seek help. So the other lesson that we learned from this uh, pastime is that Cupid can make anybody stupid. So it's not that... Uh, uh, those who are weak will become stupid. Anybody can. That's why these extraordinary pastimes have been given in Srimad Bhagavatam, whether it is Bharat Maharaj or whether it is Ajamila, that anybody, anybody, Cupid can make anybody stupid. So, um, on practical level, what we can do when we hear this, see, of course, every pastime, there are ways to take it. One is that okay, we hear the pastime, this is what happened. And then there's also, we try to draw some uh, principles. And there are also certain practical lessons that we draw from that particular pastime of Bhagavatam. And we see that when we hear this Ajamil's pastime, what we can do practically in our life is to be careful of our association with the opposite gender. Of course, all said and done in Kali Yuga, the definitions are so much different than the previous times where the association of opposite gender was very um, was very less and uh, but now because both are working I mean the, the women are also working and they have to interact but at least with this pastime we can be a little cautious when we are interacting with the opposite gender um, and we don't take maya for granted and we don't think that Actually, it will not happen to me, um, you know, it can happen to anybody. So um, the interactions with the opposite gender should be strictly limited to uh, workspace, whatever, you know, related to work related. And it should um, not be beyond that. In um, practically in our uh, um, spiritual communities also, when interacting with the other fellow devotees, we can be careful. Like those who are grihastha matajis, they can make sure that their husband is around when they're interacting with uh, somebody and avoid interaction uh, with um, somebody in a, you know, a separately. So like that, like small little steps we can start, like, you know, of course, um, if I say this, many of them may feel like oh, that much we can't follow and all, but uh, of course, Again, now this will also um, change from person to person such situation and circumstance, but uh, as much as possible, if one can avoid that and try to associate with uh, Matajis, can associate with more with Matajis. And uh, even if there is an association where we have to ask some spiritual questions, it can always be in public where there are lots of people around and no uh, separate um, association. So like that, we have to, uh, because it can be dangerous and it can be disastrous. So it should be regulated. It should be regulated and we should be very careful. We should be cautious because even when um, 
you know that uh, assistant of chaitanya mahaprabhu who was attracted by the uh, batahari ladies though he was with the lord kalakrishna das was with the lord but still this thing happened to us happened to him so uh, what about us we are just a very normal and small devotees so uh, we should be very careful when we are up, we are associating with the opposite um, gender so these are all the uh, uh, okay for what not to be done lessons then now there are also some positive lessons and from this past time is um, hope hope giving that um, mm, you know just one name of um, narayan could uh, deliver ajamil then oh we are we are chanting so many names of the lord all the time so that is one uh, hope giving thing but again we should not take it in a negative way like you know he chanted one name and he could deliver so i don't have to chant so many names i can also chant few names and that should be fine because um, there is no mathematics you know sometimes i don't know where i was giving this class to some some youth forum and then this uh, girl was saying that you know this ajamila's past time is like it encourages us in a different way that we can do whatever we want to do just enjoy our life and at the last we will say narayan so i was telling her that it doesn't work like that you know that okay at last i'll say narayan because lord there is no mathematics with lord we can't go and argue with him are you have delivered ajamil na with narayan why not me i haven't done so many sins like ajamil so there is no technical mathematical calculation it's personal and the whole point of this past time was not to um, you know give us a wrong standard that you can do anything and then you can chant it was just to tell us about the glories of holy name how how powerful is holy name to let us know how merciful is the lord and to and to make us cautious about um, you know association uh, with different gender and how we should be very careful and you know even a little distraction or slip can be so disastrous and also to let us know that um, you know give us a a hope that okay holy name is powerful and when a person chanting one time could go back then definitely we have a chance to go back so that our enthusiasm to chant will increase that's the whole point behind this past time and um, the other thing is um, another hope giving thing about this past time is at any time we can start krishna consciousness is not that it's too late because ajamil was what like 88 years old when his son narayan was born he was 83 years old man and by the time this incident happens whether yamudutha has come he's 88 so maybe narayan is what like my five year old boy or something like that so um yeah even at it was not late even at that time when he when when he called out lord's name once so there was a hope and then he got a second chance um you know uh, to um, improve and uh, control his senses and focus and absorb on lord and then he went back home back to god it so Uh, so um this is very hope giving we can you know some people are already very old you know physically old bodies we can tell them this example you know it's okay you can even start now some people are bedridden we can have this prabhu pad tapes pl- placed near their pillow or the head where they can keep hearing the lord's name so yeah it's very hope giving because and you know it's never too late and the other thing uh, uh, i was thinking is that when we read this past time um, in bhagavatam at least now we are sure that yeah like like you know yamadutas exist they are not that some kind of a imaginary thing which we tell our children when we put them to bed or to scare them oh yamadutas are like that no they are actually because when we were reading this um, verses you know how ajamil you know was like you know so uh, fearful when he saw them because they were not so good looking so it's not some imagination where we say yamadutas are fearful looking and th- that is why you see when people uh, leave the body usually they are passing stool and urine at that last moment so it's because they are really fearful those yamadutas the way they look and their copper colored hair and the red color eyes and their s- people really get scared when they see them so and that's why that last last moment leaving the body is so scary moment if they are not devotees for devotees vishnu duta has come so yeah so this is this is no imagination yamaduta is actually you know they are very fiery and the other thing is um um the second chance 
we may say wow aja mila got a second chance what about me yeah we all got a second chance actually after corona the way the first wave and the second wave of corona was we all got a second chance the fact that we are still are alive and the fact that we are able to connect with the devotees and the fact that we are you know yeah we are hearing and so krishna is so kind he also gave us a second chance because um you know i mean at least i'm talking for me that we have not finished or we have not come to that stage of pure devotee so even if you would have left the body there's so much things to be done during the second wave of corona so at least lord gave us some more time okay you have some more time at least now become serious so he i mean just like ajamila had like a near death experience um lord gave this experience to everybody the mass the whole population of the world got that near death experience where they are seeing every day people dying in their neighborhood or in their families in their apartments in their community everywhere it is like a near death experience and where people themselves also got corona where they were breathless and they had to take oxygen so krishna gave everybody a second chance said look this is how the situation is any time you will be called or you know you you will have to change your body so at least now be serious so krishna gave a second chance to all of us um actually body everybody has to live whether it is devotees or non devotees only thing is devotees get ready for it it's like a, you know a bird is resting on the branch of a tree and the moment the branch is cut now what will happen the bird will fall down but if the bird is smart and intelligent and over the period of time it has learned how to fly and it has grown its wings then even when the branch is cut the bird will fly and his bird is happy but if the bird hasn't learned to fly then the moment the branch is cut the bird will fall and die so this is a difference between a devotee and a karmis those who are not devotees they haven't yet learn to fly so they will be finished the moment you know uh, something happens to them materially they are uh, finished they die and then again you know the whole cycle continues but for a devotee he takes advantage of this and he learns how to fly so now when the the branch of the tree or the body is cut he knows now he flies home flies back home back to godhead now the other thing that may um me come to our mind okay so i'm practicing and i'm doing all this will the vishnu dutas come for me too but actually for us the vishnu dutas already came we don't even have to wait for the time when we will leave the body well the vishnu dutas will come or not for us this uh, this vishnu duta in our life is jagat guru shila prabhupad he is already here you know he is already come here to reclaim us okay come on get ready i'm here to take you so and just like the vishnu dutas were so kind to ajamil shri prabhupada is so kind to us why am i saying vishnu dutas are so kind i especially like that verse where the vishnu dutas are saying are what injustice you are doing to this innocent uh, ajamila you know <laughs> why are you taking him away so this is something you know where is his innocence actually is indulge in sense gratification and did everything wrong but just because he has chanted the name the vishnu dutas call him who is a helpless innocent uh, soul why are you taking him away and what is this justice so i was just trying to compare with shila prabhupada also same thing when um, shamsundar prabhu prabhupad disciple um, in the early days of his con when he was uh, summoned by the police you know, he was to be arrested for something that he did so he went to prabhupada and said prabhupada actually now i have to go and stay in the jail for some time and prabhupada instead of you know like looking at him as if you know he was like oh that's all right even um, krishna was born in a jail and then prabhupada says so why do you have to go and stay in jail what what have you done so no actually i did something with the drugs and then prabhupada said actually i was also dealing with drugs now prabhupada's dealing with drugs and shams the prabhu's dealing with drugs is two different things prabhupada is talking about drugs in the you know the chem- he was a chemist but prabhupada makes it so um, sweet and simple just to make him comfortable so i was thinking same like the vishnu dutas you know the way vishnu dutas saying helpless innocent uh, you know and prabhupada is also like you know i mean like 
do we are all like so hopeless but the way prabhupada is so kindly you know is that he's the kind vishnu duta who is like that's all right you know you you can still do it you can still make it you can come back so i thought that was very interesting point and also prabhupada is like a like a travel agent because actually every single moment in our life with our body mind and words we are making a choice whether we want to go in uh, um, vaikuntha airlines or we want to go in yamapuri airlines you know like indigo and spice jet in area there is there is a choice which airline you you plan to go because every moment whatever we are speaking and doing is actually you know helping us get ticket to this different uh, airlines but shri prabhupad is like that um, guru who is like telling us you know be better get a ticket in vaikuntha airlines and not the yamapuri airlines or the you know the yamadutas airlines so so now okay all said and done so far we spoke about um, association and the glories of the holy name and how the lord is so merciful the vishnu dutas the yamadutas but now comes a very important point and which brings us to our today's verse the rest was introduction is um what did he do in haridwar he did he repented and that is the that is the best part of it actually so okay now lord is merciful lord is kind lord send vishnu dutas everything fine but what are we supposed to do from our side is is the you know the real thing we need to repent lord will be kind guru will be kind devotees will be kind to us so but what we need to do is we need to also repent about it so if we see um, in madhurya kadambini vishwanath chakravarti thakur he talks about all these offenses 10 offenses and he also gives us a remedy of um, what to do if we have already committed that offense and in almost all those offenses one of the remedies or the main remedy that he prescribes is repentance cry 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 so we have to cry we have to repent we have to have that guilt we should feel that remorse there should be atonement that's the whole um, point um, because um, accidents will happen you know it's not that because bug it's not that accidents don't happen on royal roads even on royal roads accident happen so it's not that are gnana yogi karma yogi they may all have bhakti yogi is very easy you know actually even though bhakti yogi may be simple and you know a royal road but accidents happen even on royal road so one should be so um, careful and also in this repentance also there are different steps actually the first thing starts in repentance is with um, admitting yes i have made a mistake the whole point is uh, that admitting only doesn't happen it is so difficult for us to admit that we have made mistake in fact uh, even in this material world if you ask the doctors they will say that 85% of the problem with the patients is that they don't accept that they have disease if they accept that they have disease then 50% of the solution is done and same thing happens with us we don't even we can't accept we can't admit that we have done that or we have made a mistake we either we will always try to justify it actually i did it because this was a situation that was a circumstance but the actual road to repentance means no justification so we see um, jiva goswami the the famous incident where jiva goswami has this um, um, the shastrik um, way uh, arguments with uh, rupa narayan for seven days and then also another mistake that jiva goswami makes not apparent i'm using the word mistake but not mistake but whatever jiva goswami um, he to save the reputation of his guru rupa goswami he um, corrects vallabhacharya that why did you correct my guru and actually it's your perception which is wrong and this is the way to see it so for this two things that he did with vallabhacharya and also with uh, rupa narayan on two occasions he was uh, punished uh, by rupa goswami and 
in both the occasions we see he never came and justified he never justified that my dear guru maharaj i didn't do it to boost my false ego i just didn't want that you know somebody should put my guru down that's why there was no justification he just left that's all so we see that um, repentance means these are the steps you know uh, there should be no um, justification we should accept and admit you know that these are the steps and then we go to the next step um, of course um, either we do justification or the other thing we do is we cover it up as if um, or we try to hide it as as long as it is possible you know so many times you see um, unless and until you get a proof uh, you know so many so many times in management we see in the communities also Uh, they will not accept it unless until you have to prove it no prabhu you did it he saw it or or this is how it you know this is what it says or shows uh, they try to cover it up now um, materially it may look very comfortable that at least for some time if you know i can just cover this up but the whole point is covering up is like passing stool in the pant if somebody passes stool in the pants they may have successfully covered it temporarily but ultimately it will smell it will smell bad and everybody will come to know so instead of doing that better to be open about it from the beginning then at least something some solution can be brought but if we try to cover it up you know see the whole point is covering up we do because we are so much worried about our reputation and we are worried that what will people think about me they think i am a good devotee and if they come to know then you know what will they think and so reputation prestige um so many thing comes in our mind but um, instead of trying to sh- save one's reputation in this world one should try to save one's soul it's okay even if my reputation in this world will go down and people will say okay not that great devotee or she or he also has so many faults but that's all right but the soul is saved you know and now there is chance for improvement because now the whole world knows this is my stage and this is my situation so now at least i can get some help so it's like that repentance means first you admit you accept you know um you don't justify you don't try to cover up and actually when we cover up and then in in our mind we think kare koi baat nahi i will i will chant extra rounds then what we are actually doing is we are committing the seventh offense to commit a sinful activity in the strength of the holy name because we are we are thinking i did it but uh, i'll just you know i'll just do more sadhana um, i'll do fasting i'll do this and i'll try to cover it up no it doesn't work it doesn't work like that so um we should admit we should accept we should not justify we should not cover up and then um we should be ashamed that's one thing we have to be ashamed of what we did or whatever mistake happened or whatever apparent fall happened or whatever like um i agree with prabhu was once asking shri prabhupad he said prabhupad um, if a devotee has committed a sin and then after that he is not ashamed of it so then prabhupad said if there is no shame then is like an animal you know uh, offense means if you making some uh, committing some mistake means you should feel shame human means you should have shame if you're not having shame means you're animal so he was he was very particular that it's not that we'll never commit mistake we we will commit it will happen the whole point is at least we should know what to do when we don't know what to do when we have already made a mistake on what we are supposed to do next is are is are, are the steps these are the steps so we um, we feel ashamed we should um, not that um, every time that we make a mistake we should not go to geeta and say you know keep on seeing that verse apicheta sudurachara apicheta sudurachara apicheta it's only one time it's not for all the time even this question was actually asked to prabhupad by somebody prabhupad uh, how many times will that apicheta sudurachara verse work one time two time is there any calculation and prabhupad said 
I mean, Krishna may give you chance a few times. Ultimately, he may, you know, he may give up on you. Now, again, at the end of the class, don't ask me this question. But actually, we are incapable of doing anything which will make Krishna give us up. Is it not, Mataji? Now, yeah, this is yes, but it's not that we take advantage of this one line in our life. You know, there should be some kind of. We should be even scared that you know, if at all Krishna gives us up, if we don't give up. this uh, habit of you know elephant bathing committing sin and then sorry and then again committing and then repenting and then again sorry so we should be having this healthy uh, you know fear also you know which will um, which will demotivate us from doing you know mistake again and motivate us motivate us to uh, you know work in a positive direction so yeah we should be ashamed and then when we do all these things what will happen when we are um, uh, we admit and we don't try to cover up and we don't justify and we are remorseful and we are guilty and we are ashamed and then what happens then we become humble it will naturally happen now somebody may say that how do i know that actually i am guilty i am telling myself i am guilty i shouldn't have done that so how do i know actually i am guilty so we'll know if we are humble if we start feeling that um, oh i am not that great devotee or oh, i am not that pure or oh, i am Oh, i have so many faults so when we are feeling like that and we are humbled that means we have actually there is some kind of a, uh, a repentance in our um, heart in fact um, that feeling of you know I, i'm lowly should be there you know one of the uh, in one of the writings sat swarup maharaj says that um, he says that um, if you don't have that feeling of lowly then you are spiritually poverty stricken just like in the material world if you don't have money people will say oh, he's poverty stricken doesn't have money clothes food shelter in spiritual life if we don't have that state of mind where we are humble and we think i'm lowly that means we are spiritually poverty stricken that's what maharaj uh, wrote somewhere so that is one uh, symptom that we should feel um, humble and then what um repentance then uh, repentance means again you see that is also again two things one is you physically are torn okay you did some fasting or something one is mentally you know you are really guilty about it and then and then you talk about it talk about it means um, means you express it just like um, diti after um, um, encouraging and pursuing her husband to have a um, association at the wrong time then she was repentant and then she then she start speaking you know oh, i'm 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 repentant of what i did even in the case of daksha after uh, you know what he did with shiva and this whole thing that happens sati and all he talks about it you know he is repentant we see indra after the whole uh, govardhan leela he talks about it he is repentant we see after the brahma vimohan leela brahma is repentant he talks about it he does a stuti so that's one step where we yeah we should like talk about it with the lord with our uh, mentor or whatever okay i'm very sorry you know i have done this and please forgive me so that has to come in words also it's not only in the mind but it has to come we need to talk to the lord and we stand in front of him and express ourselves you know that this is what i have um, uh done when we when a tear comes out and when we cry in front of the lord lord appreciates that you know um in fact repentance is an important part of spiritual practice in every religion whether you see even christianity also they have so much uh, emphasis on uh, you know repentance you know you have to i think on sundays or something they go and share it with their uh, priest you know what they have done so um in fact there is this one past time where shri prabhupada is with tejas prabhu and there is this one devotee who had you know maybe fall down or something so he um he comes to shri prabhupada and he's expressing prabhupada i'm very sorry i i have disappointed you i could not keep my vows and you know all that he's speaking you know I, i'm the senses are so wild unable to control and all that he's he's talking and while he's talking he's crying and talking it and and shri prabhupad was so moved and even prabhupad got a tear in his eye and he was looking at tejas prabhu and saying just see how this soul is struggling to get to krishna now what happens the moment you express it and now 
this um, vaishnav is crying a tear for you he immediately krishna will be moved and will be forgiven so this is a technique so like you know i mean we should not take advantage of it this is to do it in the right way like you know that when we go and express it you know sincerely from our heart to a vaishnav and that vaishnav you know they, they have better connection with uh, with krishna or you know um, they are having that connection with the guru parampara so when we express it to them and then when they also pray for us usually our prayer for us is not that effective as another vaishnav prays for us is so effective and somebody else prays for us oh krishna this you know this devotee is crying krishna please be merciful then uh, you know it can draw krishna's attention so quickly so yes you know um we have to be um repentant and then um repentant the the tears have to come it should be from deep within heart like you know pascha tap actually means only tear pascha is after and tap means heat and afterwards because of that heat of feeling so bad of what we have done hot tears come out so that is like a actual repentance you are just feeling it it's not a lip service so yes fall down can happen for maybe whether it was bharat maharaj or chitraketu or anybody but the whole point is all these steps have to be followed has to you know now okay we repent and we cry and we talk to the lord and stuti and chant okay fine everything so how do we know that um, okay fine we are going in the right track now going the right track will mean that our next step will be action means we will not only keep saying um, you know i'm so lowly i'm so lowly i'm so lowly but we'll actually do something about it so that is uh, very important like we see in the case of parikshit maharaj when he actually put that um, snake in the neck of uh, shami krishi so what was that after that there was action he repented he said oh, uh, what i have done is not correct and he was repenting but it's not that after repenting he said okay thank you then so i'll continue with my kingdom no he just gave up his kingdom and he um took shelter of the sadhus and he surrendered to the lord and he did he took the process of shavan and um, and kirtan i mean proper absorption so there was an action so sometimes uh, what happens is um till the stage of that uh, humility i'm i'm low i'm low will will come correct step by step after that step we go in different direction if there is no action because what will happen if we simply keep saying that i'm lowly i'm lowing lowly then there also it may become uh, i mean we may become um, self centered and not krishna centered because what we'll do is i'm lowly i'm lowly i'm lowly and then you'll only talking about yourself actually i shouldn't have done that actually i should not have done that and sometimes that repentance also if it's not in connection with krishna it may actually not be pure repentance it may only be that you are frustrated that how come you you did that because you have so great thinking about yourself that you will think are i shouldn't have done that why did i do that what will people think about that kind of repentance may be there and we may misunderstand that repentance we may be repenting that log kya sochenge mere bare mein what will people think if they come to know that may be our repentance and that's why the hot tears may be coming out but actually that repentance should be in connection with krishna with rectification and more absorption that is proper repentance that means we rectify we don't commit that mistake again and we take a proper action and we increase our absorption in krishna and that repentance is also in connection with krishna that whatever i have done is displeasing krishna not that whatever i have done is uh going to um put me down in front of people it's going to um spoil my reputation with people that is not repentance whatever i have done will displease krishna that should be our thinking that that is a proper repentance but otherwise um, even in humility also sometimes what we are humility sometimes is just frustrated ego false ego we are just thinking about ourselves only there is nothing about krishna in that uh, repentance is about us you know so that's how it is we should be um, very careful what is the action we should see what's our next action you know once uh, one devotee was asking a senior vaishnav you know prabhu please uh, 
keep showering your uh, mercy on me. And the devotee replied so nicely. He said, you please keep receiving it. I mean, sometimes maybe the, the guru is showering his mercy, but maybe we are not even receiving it. We are asking them, shower your mercy, shower your mercy, but are we receiving it? That's the question mark. Are we even holding the container to receive that mercy? Are we in the right state of mind to even receive that mercy? That's a big question mark. We may be giving a lip service. I need your mercy, I need your mercy. But what are we even doing to get that mercy or even to receive that mercy? So um, that's how it is. So repentance, these are the uh, steps. And um, what we need to do is, mind will not allow us to do a proper repentance. It will always give us some of the other justifications. Because we are again... You know, mind is the one which is making us do things wrong. And then we again go and take shelter of that mind only. Then how it will help? What we need to do is we should need go and take a, uh, shelter of a devotee. And that devotee will help us to look at things from a other direction, like a third empire. In a sense, oh, this is not correct. So that is why we need to have uh, close devotee friends. Sometimes we think... Um, Close devotee association means those whom we can closely, you know, hug and um, share prasadam and maybe share saris with them and maybe go to yatras. But actually, close association means one who can be more closer or as closer to us as our mind is. The mind is the closest thing to us. And if we have some devotee who is as closer as the mind, whom we can actually tell, Prabhu, this is the situation. Mataji, this is the situation. And then that devotee will make us look at things, you know, from a third, from a bird's view or from another point of view. No, this is where you are going wrong. So that will um, help us. So we should have, um, you know, some devotees who can... Because, um, see, sometimes we may be doing everything right, actually. If you see in Ajamila's life also, Somebody may get a question. Ajamila was reading scriptures. Ajamila was doing Vaishnava Seva. Ajamila was serving the Lord, right? Plucking the flowers. Ajamila was in association of his Vaishnavas in the family. His father, his uh, wife from a good Brahmana family. So Ajamila was doing all things right. Then why did he fall down? Because in ISKCON, we will always say this ABCD, ABCD. Anybody ask, how do we progress in Krishna consciousness? Prabhu, ABCD, Prabhu. <clears throat> association, A for association and B for books and C for chanting and D for proper diet and everything will be fine. So, and then you will you will not fall down. But if we may ask a question, Are Baba, then why Ajam will fall down? He also is doing ABCD and we are also doing ABCD. Now there is a, there is a problem here. See, sometimes... You see, in our life, maybe we are simply walking on the road and somebody came and pushed us or some car came and pushed us and some accident happened. So, uh, intelligent that we are and reading the scriptures that we do, we'll immediately say, Are, maybe this life I haven't done anything wrong, but maybe in the previous life I must have done wrong. That is why I got this karma. So, we are very convinced and we are happy with that answer. But karma not only comes in a physical way, the reactions and results of karma also come in a mental way. So it's not that, you know, every time whatever you did previously wrong will only come as a health problem or as a family issue or a financial problem or a, uh, you know, no. Sometimes it also comes in a, that, that result of the previously committed activity may also come as a mental deviation. Means... When you are most vulnerable situation, when you are weak, at that time that particular deviation may um, may distract you. That's That may be because of your previous life karma. Maybe this life you did everything right. You did A, B, C, D, you did everything fine. But still that distraction came because of the previous life karma. So that cannot be helped, right? This life I did something wrong or I'll try to rectify myself. But if something I've done in previous life, I can't go and change there. At the same time, I can't escape the result of that activity. So it is like that sometimes you see even in our day-to-day -day life, you know, when we are um, not in a good mood, you know, and somebody comes and will say, Are Baba, not now, I'm not in good mood. Please don't take out this topic now. So at this moment, I'm vulnerable. I'm, I'm not feeling right. Please don't come and talk. We, we say that, right? 
but we can't say that to the karma hey, i'm already distracted i'm already feeling weak in this particular you know with my particular sense this particular uh, sense of mind uh, senses of mind so please now don't come and disturb you can't stop karma from you know saying that karma will come whatever you have done previously so now how to escape you know maybe everything we did right but because of previous life karma now we got agitated at that particular moment we became weak and we did something wrong so now what to do it's not your fault so that is why we need devotee association so whenever the karma comes back the the result of our previous karma comes back whether physically or in a mentally we should have somebody to help us who is standing next to us or who is just there for us where we can you know take shelter this is what is happening i am becoming weak can you please help me then that devotee will hold our ear and just like chaitanya mahaprabhu caught the you know kala krishna by his hair and brought that devotee will bring us by our ear hey right? don't go you're going in the wrong direction so yeah we need to have some um, devotee help so like that we see there are uh, many many um, lessons and the foremost thing is repentance should bring us close to krishna repentance should make us take shelter of krishna and that should be done in accordance with guru sadhu and shastra not on our own sometimes you know especially in south india by themselves they'll make some repentance means uh, uh, for for one month i'll not take uh, this particular ingredient in food or some kind of that kind of atonements they will do i'll not eat every monday i will not eat that is not that is not the way to do repentance it should be in a consultation with guru sadhu and shastra what should be the repentance for whatever uh, wrong we have um, done and uh, okay now whatever we have uh, done in past whatever has happened is happened what to do next how to be safe and that should be done in consultation with uh, Uh, guru sadhu and um, shastra so uh, i think it's already time it's already 6 uh, 5 there was another two three aspects that i was thinking to um, touch on was um, in the purport um, there was this mention about um, some go to vaikuntha and some go to go look over in davan so yeah how those who have spontaneous devotion for the lord they go to go look and um do do by the bhakti and attracted by the aishwarya uh, rasa they like the lord in the aishwarya rasa go to vaikuntha and also there was this one mention in this verse about um, haridwar and i was thinking that how um in bhakti the time place and circumstances so important and how um, you know this place haridwar also having such an important uh, you know it's easier to do bhakti when we are in the right place with the right aura vibrations and right people so um, this is also of course another uh, topic which i would like to dwell on some day that why um, this holy place is so important you know that's why in the 64 limbs of uh, bhakti rupa goswami talks about uh, mathura vas you know so here also we see that um, he went to the right place and he did his uh, uh, repentance so how important it is uh, you know the, the place is also so important where we um, perform or we do our spiritual practice so people place food like it says in bhagavatam that verse where what you eat what you drink what mantra you chant what books you read what people you associate with everything will contribute to our um, krishna consciousness so everything is important it's not like only this thing or you know everything will contribute in one or the other way to uh, help us in our uh, journey back home back to godhead um saying this i'll uh, pause here for um, comments or suggestions or questions um thank you so much jagat guru shri prabhupad ki jai hari krishna
I don't know what is wrong with my <coughs> internet connection, but I'm able to hear the question in like part, part. But <coughs> what I understood is that Prabhuji was trying to say that the Guhiya Makhyati Prachati, do we have to do it with the devotees only or Guru or can we do it with the Lord? Was that the question? Do we have to do it only with Guru or senior or can we just directly go to the Lord and say that? That was your question? Um, you know, um, if it... If it is okay to do it with Guru, uh, if it is okay to do it with Krishna, then Rupa Goswami would not have put it there that it has to be done with a devotee. When we do it with a devotee live who is present, he can correct us. But um, you know, Lord works through his devotees, so we need a, a devotee to share so that we can get a response because we are not on that level where we can get directly response from the Lord. So we need to do it with a devotee. And who will respond to us and who will correct us, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, as you rightly said that Krishna already knows everything. We need to tell it to the devotees. That will make us humble. And as you say in Hindi, what is happening in Hindi, it grows. So, how much money is happening? People are hiding from their children. They don't tell them how much money is. They will spend all their money. What is happening in Hindi, it grows. So, when we are hiding from our father, when we are hiding from our father, it grows. When we hide something, it increases. So, better to be open about it, then it will stop there. It will not increase further. How to receive mercy? Oh, your question is how to receive mercy? Uh, to be open for corrections, instructions. That is the thing. Sometimes we have already built a wall again around ourselves. That I am right, what I am doing is correct. According to my situation, I am doing whatever is possible. We are not open for corrections, rectifications. So that is where we are stopping our receiving. So it's like a barish to gir rahi hai. But we have kept umbrellas. It's like the, the, it's, the rain is falling, but we have kept umbrellas. We are not, we are not allowing the rain to come on us. The karuna marsi, like we are singing, na? samsara dava, nalali dhaloka. Tranaya karunya ghana ghanatvam. Actually, that ghana ghanatvam is actually coming, but we have kept umbrellas. So where, when we are open for corrections and we accept instruction, that is receiving uh, mercy. You are so sweet and so honest. Um, yes, Mataji, everybody is uh, facing that problem uh, uh, that they don't get the right friend. So actually, in Krishna consciousness, just like we are doing our chanting, taking prasadam, service and all, we should also be in lookout for somebody um, who is more more advanced than us and more matured and whom we can trust and the sooner we get that kind of relationship it will be so helpful for us just like in a school when you have a you have a teacher in the school it's nice but when you have a private tuition then you know so many doubts you can clarify so like that if we have some devotee in our life then a lot of pressure will gone will, will be gone when we are able to share and as you rightly said that even if we share sometimes with some devotees they may just um, they may just simply blow air just like you know when you get a pus you get a boil which is full of pus you know so mostly the the devotees around us are like they will just <laughs> blow air you know and you will feel very comfortable oh you are very nice mother actually you are very nice actually you are pure devotee you are nice very rarely we'll get some devotee who will come with a needle and prick in that boil and remove all the pus you know so we are all actually in, in look out for that kind of devotee in our life sometimes we get sometimes we may not get we may not have access to um, such devotee association also when it comes with comes about family and all sometimes we are reluctant to share it with our husband or wife or children because we may think they will judge us and also especially between husband and wife and then later on if any fight comes up he'll always bring up that point that this is what you said it's going on in your mind and this is your, your level and don't think you are a great devotee so where do we go for shelter guru is not accessible spiritual mentor is not available husband uh, risky to share so where do we go in this kind of situation so one thing we can do is uh, we can pray to krishna that you know send somebody in our life and the other thing 
meanwhile we can do is to write write journal like a diary so where we can express all our uh, um, feelings whatever has happened put it in the book you don't have to share it or show it with uh, to anybody till you come to that place where you know you can trust a devotee so you can start doing it and that will also help because there is a chaita guru in our heart so we can write down whatever we feel you know every single day what what is going on in our lives and then after some time you can just go back and you can read it half of the problem will be sorted out when you start writing it because you will get the solution and answer yourself because when you experience it you are experiencing it when you write it then you will start looking at it as a third empire as a different person and you will only get solution from this oh actually why am i thinking like that actually i should have it will come out because chaitya guru will help you parmatma will help you so we can do that you can start writing that will help you you know you write whatever uh, good or bad thoughts that come in even good thoughts can be written down because sometimes when we go down and then we look back to those diary pages we'll think wow those days my consciousness was on such high level you know why have i come up to this level i have to i should, i am capable of keeping my consciousness on that particular level and why did i come down now so that will have you will be um, inspired you know and when you actually uh, write down it uh, really helps when you when you write just try doing it today also if you want just before sleeping what all happened today what's coming in your mind good or bad thought just write and see you will be surprised you know it will bring you so much closer to yourself you will feel that i didn't even knew this side of me that i'm think because sometimes so many thoughts are coming we're not even conscious about it but when we start putting it in the paper we are conscious about every thought that has passed through us so then we'll be we'll get more closer to ourselves where am i what is happening what i'm where i'm standing so that will help you till you get a mentor you can actually start uh, writing it writing it writing it you know and parmatma and chaitya guru will help you from inside to find solutions yes it's it you are right i have lately not taking many classes at all i've been traveling a lot and i mean those days was the corona lockdown so i had ample of uh, time to give classes now with the temple and school and uh, there's so many things happening at a time that i'm hardly giving uh, classes i know i'm shamgori mata has also been pushing me regularly and uh, somehow she is very kind you know because of her pushing i have come today otherwise i would have skipped today also <laughs> i am i have just came back from you know dwarka yatra ahmedabad dwarka and i'm again after yes tomorrow again i'm leaving for another yatra for five days so i am traveling a lot yeah it is fine it is fine but it has to be followed by certain rules and regulations so somebody needs to be there around when when you express yourself or you ask any questions it has to be if you know followed like you can have somebody maybe your son or daughter or your husband or somebody sit there or some other mata ji or maybe you can go for counseling for some grahasthas like some husband and wife they are you know they both can sit together and then you can express where that prabhu's wife is also present or somebody is present then that is the that's the vaishnava etiquette we need to follow that Yes, Mataji, you are right. Most of the time we get answers when we hear very carefully, you know, Krishna sends answers. I've seen hundreds of times when devotees say, oh, today's class, I got answers for all my questions. So Krishna is there as Paramatma and when we are sincerely seeking help and asking questions, Krishna arranges for the answers at the right time, you know, from the right source or whatever, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words. I'll definitely pray for you. You pray for me. And why like me? You should become better than me. Mataji, you can definitely justify. It all depends upon time, place and situation. If you see Chitraketu Maharaj, he justified. But he didn't justify... because he didn't want the punishment he just justified because he felt i should at least explain when mother parvati cursed chitraketu maharaj he came down from his plane 
and he paid obeisances and he said mother i didn't mean to um you know criticize lord shiva i just wanted to glorify his greatness that he can talk about renunciation and give a class in a sabha with his wife on the lap that is the greatness of lord shiva that is what i was trying to say but at the same time his expectation was not that after justification so now mother parvati will take the curse back so that's a, that's another way of doing it so it's what i am trying to say here justification is that not that we think that now since i have justified so don't give me punishment or something like that you know so we like a, uh, whether it was uh, you know in other devotees cases actually when we are punished or that we are, it leads to purification so we should take it in that mood and we should not take it in a challenging mood i haven't done anything wrong i can prove it that should not be the mood we should be humble when seniors are saying something see like you see in the scriptures there are so many past times of durvasa muni where um or apparently where he has uh, cursed or given some punishment for sometimes no fault or sometimes Mm, more exaggerated punishment for small fault right but ultimately we know it is for the good whether narad muni is cursing of uh, the sons of kuvera or whether durvasa muni is cursing ultimately there is a bigger plan involved so when in spiritual life when we deal with our seniors and all uh, we don't try to justify if we are trying to justify to boost our egos okay i just want to make just want to let you know that i'm not wrong so that kind of justification is not required but at the same time certain practical situations require justification so you know you cannot um, you know like something let's say about cooking or putting salt in the dal or sometimes some things you'll have to say no actually this has not been done like that so you don't take it very literally take it according to time place situation and circumstance and try to understand the uh, underlying principle behind it okay mataji uh, yes uh, uh, i was not worried about the punishment i was ready to take as a punishment yes mataji you can continue the chanting and take association of devotee definitely krishna will show you the uh, way mataji and also this is not one chance there are uh, there is a lot of hope whatever this life that we are living is very short of all the li- lives that we've been living for so many years now so sometimes it's just one you know one small step at a time see whatever we want to achieve in spiritual life is like the stars and sometimes we feel the stars are so far can i achieve it i'm so small but in spiritual life along with the stars there are also stairs staircase so we should take one step at a time one step at a time now the staircase and the star are two far things but if we keep taking one step at a time krishna is very intelligent any time he will remove the gap between the stair and the stars we never know so we should not worry so much about how far is the star what we should worry about is what is the next step in my stair so now you are chanting and you're already associating with this devotee is on zoom so one step taken and then the second step you start offering the food to krishna and then it's the next step so don't worry about the goal just one step at a time and that will slow and steady you will win the race sab krishna 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 lage sab krishna 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 lage sab krishna 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 lage sab krishna 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 